you're doing a capture the flag or CTF and have already pawned a user on the machine. That's great. Good for you. Now you need to move files and folders from your system to the remote system. How do you do that? In this video, I'll show you some pretty easy things you can do to upload your files. Stay tuned. All right, so I have two machines in here. So I have my remote machine and my local machine on this other side. On the Vectum or the remote machine, you can see that if I do a who am I, I am a standard user. Now, if I do an ID, then I can see the different users that I belong to. And one of them is sudo, which is pretty cool. Then what I do is just PWD to see where I am. So I am in home vagrant and then I do an LS AL to see the files that are in this folder. Perfect. So I have this information. Now, if I go back to my attacker machine and do an LS, I have a few things that I need to upload to the remote server. So the first one is very, very easy. If I do a cat on my RCE file, you'll see that it's just a one liner, right? This is a bash command to create an interactive shell on the remote machine. So I don't need to really upload this. All I do is just copy this, go back to my remote connection or SSH connection in here and do an echo double quotes. And then I just paste this information, double quotes, greater than, and then RCE. And then you'll see that it's already in there. I don't have to upload it. I can create it, right? So cat RCE, there you go. So that's the easiest way to be able to copy and paste from your local machine into the remote machine. The second way is also pretty easy. So let's say I'm doing an MSF Venom like that, and I need to create a short file, like a reverse TCP handler, for example, there it is. And then if I do a cat on that file, you'll see that this is information that I need to upload. All right, so again, you don't have to upload this information. All you do is just copy here, all of this, and then on your remote machine, I can just type in which and you type in the editors that possibly can be used in this machine. So nano will be an easy one. Sudo edit. It's another easy one. You can do Vim. You can do V and let's see what this machine has. So it does have nano and it has sudo edit as well as V. So you can use any of these editors to be able to create the file. So I'm going to do nano, which is the easiest nano evil.php paste this information. You can see that it's right there. Control X, Y, and there you go. So now if I do a cat on that file, you'll see that the information is already in there. Perfect. So now I have two files in there. All right. So in my attacker machine, if I do an LS, you'll see that I also have linps that I want to upload. Now, if I do a CAD on linps, you'll see that this file is pretty massive. <laughs> this is a pretty, pretty big file. And I might not want to copy all of this information and just paste it or create a file. You can actually do that if you want, but it's easier to just uh, upload it to the server. So how do you do that? Well, fairly easy. So this is the file I need to upload. The first thing I need to do is just see what my IP address is. So I do a host name minus capital I like that. And this is my IP address, right? And then I just do a Python server. So in this case, I'm going to do Python three M HTTP server. And then the port is going to be 8080 and there. So I'm serving this web server so I can retrieve the information from my remote machine in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type in which and then I can do curl and w get, which are two programs that you can use for downloading information. And as you can see, the server has both of them installed. So let's start with w get for w get. You just type in w get HTTP colon slash slash the IP address of the attacker port, which is 8080 and the name of the file. In this case, it's going to be linpeace.sh and there it is. So you can see that my link piece is there. If you want to check out whether the whole entire file has been uploaded, you do an LSAL and then you can see that there is 
all of this information that was uploaded, right? Now, let me just remove this and then we're going to try curl. For curl, you do curl minus capital O for output and then again, HTTP column slash slash the IP address column 8080 slash then piece dot sh and it does absolutely the same thing. There you go. So lin piece is there. Perfect. So we've been uploading a few files. That's pretty cool, really fast. Now I have this folder. And if you look at this folder, if I do a tree exploit, you'll see that this is a lot of information that I need to upload. So a whole bunch of folders and files and stuff like that. The best way to be able to upload this information to your remote machine is by zipping this file uh, into a zip file and then uploading it. But how do you know that the remote machine uses zip? Well, I do a which again, a zip, and then I'm going to do a tar. So in this case, you can see that my machine does not have zip, but it does have tar. So we can actually tar this file and then upload it. So let's just do that, right? So this is the file that I want to tar or zip tar, however you want to call it. And I type in tar minus C Z V F and then the name of the file and the folder that I want to tar. So let me explain this. C is for create. Z is for JZip, so compress. V is for the vervo, so I want to see the information that is being zipped. And the F is for file, so exploit.tar.jz. Then I just click enter. This is the verbose, right? And this is the file that has been created. Perfect. All right. So again, hostname, I, right? Pick up the IP address and then just do a Python 3 server again. Go back to the remote machine. And then from here, we do a wget. And I can just go back like this. Let's do a curl maybe. And the name of the, fold, the file is this. So we just pick this up and paste it in here. Voila, there you go. The zip folder is already in there. So now we just have to extract it. To extract this is fairly easy, tar again, and then we're gonna put minus X for extract, then ZF and the name of the file. There you go. LS, CD exploit, voila. So all your files are in here. Awesome. So those are fairly easy ways to do this. Now let's do another one, which I'm pretty fond of. I really like Metasploit because it's so easy to use and you can create interpreter sessions and all of that. So let's use Metasploit or MSF console to upload and download stuff. All right, so I'm starting my MSF console right now. Great. So in here, what I do is search SSH login like that. And there it is. This is the module we're going to be using. Right, so use zero, there you go. If I type in options, then all I have to do is just fill out the username, the password, and the R host. So if I go back to the victim machine, host name minus capital I, this is the IP address. Let's copy it. And then in here, set our host like that, set password, vagrant, set username, vagrant, like that, and then run. So now if I do sessions, I'll see that I have one session, but this is an SSA session, it's not a meterpreter session. So let's transform it. You type in sessions and then minus U and then the ID of the session one, and then it's going to upgrade this SSA session into an interpreter session. So this failed because uh, this port is being already used. So let's go into options again and let's change the port. So set L port and let's give it whatever name 4444 oops set our port 4444 there you go and then run perfect now sessions and i have two sessions and one of them is an interpreter session so in here what i do is just type in sessions two and then i have a interpreter session in here see there you go now you can just type in upload right so upload let's say limpiece.sh no such file <laughs> Okay, so I, as you can see, I misspelled this. So upload then piece.sh. There you go. So it's already uploaded right in here. Now, let's suppose that in the vector machine, so I'm going to echo something in here. So let's say a hash, right? Like that. And then I'm going to put this in a file called hash, right? If I go back to my attacker machine, then I do an ls. You'll see that this file that I want to download, all I have to do is just type in download 
hash and then it's already downloaded right so i can put this into the background by typing in bg as in background if i do an ls then you'll see that my hash is already there so cat hash there it is. So you can use Meterpreter to upload and download files and folders also, which is pretty cool. All right, and that's it. Super easy, quick and dirty way of transferring files using just Echo, using uh, Nano and an editor, as well as uh, zipping files, and then using Meterpreter at the very end to be able to upload and download stuff. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.